Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. So as you probably know by now, a lot of my sewing projects are inspired by movies and TVs and a lot of other costumes from other works of fictions. And this video is no exception to that rule. So this project is a result of my latest obsession. Recently, I finally read Much Ado About Nothing by William Shakespeare. I have read some of his other works before, like I read Midsummer Night's Dream, I read Macbeth, I read The Twelfth Night, but none of them got me hooked the way this one did. So Much Ado About Nothing, if you haven't read it, it's basically the best romantic comedy that was ever created, in my opinion. The plot is a bit cliche, I mean, you can basically guess the ending. Or maybe it's not because the plot is cliché. Maybe it's because the chemistry between Beatrice and Benedict is just way too strong to be ignored. But anyway, it's just a very light, fun, romantic, cute thing to read, I think. And after reading the book, I liked it so much, I just started binging every version of it. So I watched the uh, movie version with Emma Thompson as Beatrice, and then I watched the Globe production, and then I watched the Tate and Tannen theatre version. All of them were really great, I enjoyed every single one of them. But costume-wise, the Benedict costumes from the Globe production really caught my attention. So in the scene where Benedict was kind of tricked by Leonardo and Claudio and the prince, he wore this beautiful printed shirt smock thing with a pair of navy pants and with some burgundy red belt sash kind of thing on his waist. And I think that outfit was just amazing. And I want it for myself, so I have decided to make an entire outfit inspired by Benedict's outfit from the Glow production. So the first thing I'm going to make from this outfit is the shirt. So I basically just watched the Glow production again and again and again to really look at Benedict's shirt. You can kind of see it's constructed with giant rectangles and basically just pleats it somewhere and then ruffles add it somewhere and boom, it was a shirt. So this shirt is the first item I'm going to make on this entire Benedict inspired outfit. And only for the shirts, I'm going to do this thing entirely by hand. Mostly because I recently moved into a new place and this new place has no sewing machine. But um, sewing has always been a big part of my life and I don't want to leave it for a few months just because I don't have a machine. So yeah, now I'm going to take you on to the journey on how I made this shirt and I hope you enjoy it. A new desk because I am living in a new place with no sewing machine. So these tools are all the tools I brought with me. So let's see what we have here. I have my fabric scissors, I have my pin cushion, I have my tape measure, thimble, I have some wax for the threads, I have a few spools of threads, I have some of my rulers and finally I have my tiny scissors for hand stitching. So these are everything I have and I don't have a sewing machine right now. I don't even have an iron so yeah, wish me luck. The fabric I am using is this beautiful peach beige printed cotton. It's actually very similar to the original shirt in terms of color, but I couldn't find the exact print, so this is what I ended up buying. So it's going to look a little bit different from the original, but I don't mind because look at this. This is so pretty, I'm in love with it. And yeah, I can't wait to get started, so let's get started. The first thing I did was tearing the cotton fabric into pieces for the shirt. I decided to just tear everything because tearing gives the pieces perfect straight edges, which is more difficult to achieve with cutting when the design of the fabric is so busy. Also, I was lazy, that's why I didn't even measure anything. I just kind of hold the fabric to myself to determine the sizes and stuff. But hey, we are sewing under limitations here, so yeah, if it works, it's good. Thank you. 
After I tore everything, I jumped right into stitching. So the two largest pieces were the front and back piece of the shirt. They connect to each other on the shoulder seams, so I did those first. All the seams on this shirt were first backstitched and then whip stitched to create really clean seams. After the shoulders are connected, I cut an opening on the center front to make a gap for the collar. Benedict has these sort of ruffle pleat things on his collar, so I decided that I want the same feature. These pleats seem to connect to the bodice through a piece that is very similar to a modern collar stand. So I measured the circumference of the collar and tore out a strip of cotton, folded and stitched it to create a double layer stand. To create the ruffles, I took a very long strip of cotton and also folded it in half and stitched the ends. Then I started pleating it while pinning it down at the same time. Okay, so this is what I have achieved so far. So this is the um, collar stand, I think, because this entire thing could be understood as a giant collar, but I kind of feel like um, if we're trying to understand it from like a modern point of view, then this thing would be the collar stand and this thing would be the actual collar because, you know, like modern day shirts on collars, there's like a stand and then the flip over part. Unless you're talking about a mandarin collar, then that would be only a strip, so only the stand part. But yeah, the stand and the fluff ruffle pleated part on the top. So now what I'm going to do is that I will put this thing in between these two layers and then I will backstitch the entire top and then I could just flip it over and create a nice clean collar. So um, yeah. I'm not really excited about this part because if you have ever hand stitched then you would know when you are just stitching on like two layers of fabric it's, it's amazing, it's happiness, it's super fun but when you're trying to stitch through all these layers so two layers of fabric and then in between there is a pleated thing sandwiched in between um, I don't know, wear a thimble, wear a thimble, definitely wear a thimble <laughs> but up to now this thing is actually coming together much better than I thought it would because the shoulder seams, they only took me approximately an hour to finish, which is much faster than I imagined it would be. So anyway, I still have approximately 30 minutes before I need to go to work. So um, yeah, I am just going to spend some time stitching the collars together and then I'm going to work and then I will come back in the evening and continue to work on this thing. Then I stitched the pleats onto the collar stand and removed the pins when I sew. This is definitely not a good way to do things because I got stabbed more than several times. I'm just doing it because I don't even have an iron at hand so I do need the pins there to keep the pleats in place. After the ruffle has been attached to the collar stand thingy, the entire collar is ready to be attached onto the shirt. I first stitched the outside layer to the shirt using backstitch. Then I folded the other layer of the collar inwards and closed the collar with a whip stitch. I have finished the collar. I think I did a pretty good job considering I don't have an iron. I still got the ruffles pretty crisp so I'm really happy about that. So far so good. Uh, just one thing. At this moment I'm not entirely sure if I could pull off this look because in the glow production play Benedict was so dashing. But um, now that I'm wearing the half finished shirt with no sleeves I just kind of feel I don't exactly know how I feel, I just know that I certainly do not feel dashing or handsome, so yeah, I don't know, maybe it's the lack of sleeves because it's kind of hanging on me like a cape, which is not a very pretty look. Well, but I have come so far, so now I'm just going to try to add some sleeves onto this thing and see if it makes me feel better, so um, 
yeah, hopefully I can at least put one sleeve onto this thing tonight because it's kind of late and I had a long day. Tomorrow will probably be another long day. So I think I'm just going to try and put one sleeve on and then go to bed. So yeah, let's get the sleeve done. The sleeves are the easiest sleeves I have ever done. Unlike modern sleeves that have round sleeve heads, these are just giant rectangles with gathers on the top and gussets under. So all the seams are straight and I don't need to worry about any shade issues because there is no shade to it. First I did some gathers on the top of the sleeve. I did a running stitch through the center and pulled the threads to create tiny even gathers. Then I set the sleeves onto the body finished all the seams with backstitch first and then whip stitch to clean up all the edges. So I have finished both the gussets and the underarm seam and the side seam. So the major constructions, the larger seams on this shirt are all done. So now the only uh, construction left for me to do is to finish up this sleeve situation. And the rest would be just hemming, which is super easy and there's no construction involved. So the situation here is that on Benedict's shirt, he has ruffles on both his neckline and his shirt cuffs. But I don't know about mine because I am really not a big ruffle person and... When I was stitching these ruffles onto the neckline, wow, it was torture. Because they're like three layers of fabric and one layer is even like double folded so it's really hard to stitch through and I didn't really enjoy doing that and again I'm not a big ruffle person so honestly I don't know if it's really worth it to go through you know the painful hand stitching process to get these ruffles because I'm not really attracted to them but then again I want to keep this shirt as close to Benedict's shirt as possible so uh, I don't know. Okay, you know what? I'm only going to do this shirt once and I might as well just make it as similar to Benedict's shirt as possible. Okay, so the plan for the ruffles is that I will create the ruffle strip first and then create this um, kind of like a stand for the ruffles and then attach both of those onto the sleeve. So yeah, basically it's just repeating the neckline process but with a smaller circumference. And of course, before I attach the ruffles, I need to finish up this seam as well. So let's go and do that. The cuff ruffles are the exact same thing as the collar ruffles. I first took a long strip of fabric, folded it in half lengthwise and sewed the two ends together to create a nice fabric strip. Then I pleated the strip and again stitched it to a separate piece of fabric, creating a shirt cuff with a ruffle edge. Then the cuffs are sewn onto the sleeves in a similar way as the collar was sewn. Stitch on one layer first and the other layer turn inwards. Benedict's shirt seems to have buttons made of cell fabric, so I did the same thing. I created tiny little buttons using some scraps I have left over. Although being made of just fabric, these buttons are very sturdy and I think they are a wonderful choice if you want perfectly coordinated buttons on your garments. I also hand stitched a bunch of loops to go with the buttons. The pictures and footage I have don't really tell what the button loops are like on the original shirt, so I just went with my own idea. After the buttons and the loops, all that was left was a bit of hemming, so I quickly finished that and the shirt was done. I think this shirt turned out really well. It really channels a strong Benedict vibe and I'm so thrilled about it. So this is the first video on making a Benedict inspired outfit. I will also be making some trousers and accessories to complete the look. Thank you for joining me on this little shirt making process and I will see you next time.